Let's say that you want to build a human body from scratch. In this crazy hypothetical scenario, there's gonna be some store you can visit and you can shop for the tissues you need. What you'd be shopping for are essentially four basic tissues that comprise your entire body. So we have muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, nervous tissue, and connective tissue. Now, muscle, epithelial, and nervous are pretty intuitive. You could probably figure out where those are for the most part, but connective tissue tends to be a little more mysterious. What is it connecting? Where do you find it, and what's its purpose? All good questions, and hopefully I have a few answers for you in this video. Let's do this. Okay, so let's start by figuring out the different types of connective tissue because there are four different subtypes. You have cartilage, bone, general connective tissue, and blood. Blood these days is actually kind of on the fence as to whether or not we're gonna keep classifying it as a connective tissue, and depending on the textbook you're looking at, you might see something different. But for our purposes, we're gonna consider it a connective tissue for the time being. Let's start with cartilage, because there are different types of cartilage and we also find it in different locations in the body. So there are three different types of cartilage found in the body. First is called hyaline cartilage, also sometimes referred to as hyaline, so whatever makes you happy, you can go ahead and call it that. Fibrocartilage and elastic cartilage. Each of these are gonna have their own unique functions, so we'll take a look at them individually. So let's start off with hyaline cartilage. And in front of us, I have a trachea or windpipe, and you can kind of see how I'm able to accordion it back and forth. That's because there's a lot of flexibility in this structure, which you're gonna want, especially when you start coughing or respirating in general. But if you look closely, you're gonna see there are these things called cartilaginous rings, and then there's gonna be other little bits of connective tissue connecting those rings. These cartilaginous rings don't form a full circle. And if I turn this around and scoot this esophagus to the side, you can see that it doesn't form a complete circle on the backside. So you'll often hear these be referred to as C-shaped rings or U-shaped rings to just reinforce the idea that it doesn't form a complete circle. But they're made of hyaline cartilage. Hyaline is the most common type of cartilage found in the body. You find this on the end of long bones, your nose is made of hyaline cartilage. In fact, when you were an embryo still inside a mom's uterus, your entire skeleton was made of hyaline cartilage. But again, its main purpose is to reduce friction, which is why it's also really glassy and smooth, which is why you find this inside of joints at the end of bones because it makes for a nice and efficient surface for the bones to articulate with. The next type of cartilage is called fibrocartilage, and you're gonna find this in areas of the body that require a good amount of shock absorption. So, in front of us, we're looking at the spine, or vertebral column right here, and these light colored bands are going to be the intervertebral discs, and then these darker colored bands are going to be the vertebrae, or backbones. So these intervertebral discs here are made of fibrocartilage. And again, this is all about shock absorption. You can kind of picture that these are cushions for all of these vertebrae which are stacked on top of each other. Without these intervertebral disc cushions, just try and imagine this for a second. What would happen if you went like that? You can just picture all those backbones slamming into each other. So it makes sense you'd need to have a cushion. The problem is they're gonna be avascular, which means they don't have a good amount of blood supply and it makes it very difficult to heal from injuries like a bulging or ruptured disc. But that's a separate topic for a completely different video, but still, it's all about shock absorption. You find fibrocartilage in places such as your temporal mandibular joint, where your mandible is connecting up into your cranium, or also in the knee. You may have heard of a meniscus. The menisci are types of fibrocartilage, and they are just helping to absorb shock between the femur and the tibia. The last type of cartilage is called elastic cartilage, and this is the most rare type in the body. You only find it in two places the external ear or your auricle, and then also your voice box or your larynx, and it's called the epiglottis. Now, the thing about elastic cartilage is it's all about retaining its shape. If I were to just sit and pinch my ear for like five minutes or so, and then release it, it would snap back. And that's because it's made of elastic cartilage. If I did that to my nose, which is made of hyaline cartilage, it would just be bent because it's not designed to retain its shape. 
So the question is, why is it important to retain the shape? Well, for the ear, it comes down to the reliability of sound. You see, if you just go ahead and pinch and move your outer ear around while I'm talking, you're gonna hear my voice start to be distorted, and it's gonna be a little difficult to get the exact location of where my voice is at. This could be a big problem if you're in the wild being chased by a tiger, or maybe if you're just trying to find somebody and they're out there yelling Marco, and you just have no idea where the sound is coming from. In terms of the epiglottis, I can actually help you out here because I have one here. So what you're gonna notice is that I have, I can kinda get this going for you, a right lung that is going to be connected to the trachea, and if I bring this closely, we can see the outside of the larynx or your voice box here. Now what I wanna do is turn this around. And what we can see is inside of that voice box, and we see this little flap right here, this is called the epiglottis, and that's that elastic cartilage structure. And its job is going to be to protect the airway. So as I push it down, it's going to be blocking off the entryway into the respiratory tract and making it so whatever is being swallowed goes down this posterior tube called the esophagus. So as you're swallowing food and drink, this is going to slam down and block off the airway. It makes sense that you'd want this made out of elastic cartilage, so it always does its job. Because if it doesn't, even just once, well, you're choking. The next type of connective tissue is probably the most intuitive, and that's going to be bone tissue. So in front of you, I have a real human skeleton. Now, bone tissue serves a variety of different functions, including calcium and mineral storage, uh, blood cell formation, fat storage, and also as an attachment site for muscles. In fact, if you didn't have bone tissue, you'd just be this puddle of soft tissue on the floor. It's extremely important. It's also very much alive. I know a lot of times, at least in my eyes, it's easy to think of bone as like almost these rocks inside of your body, but that's not true. Your bones aren't fossilized, your bones are very much alive. And if you were to microscopically zoom in on this bone, well, not this one, but a living bone, you would find that there are cells that are very much alive. This next one is probably the least intuitive of all the different types of connective tissue. It's called general connective tissue, and there are three different subtypes of it. You have what's called connective tissue proper, reticular tissue, and adipose tissue. Now, in a later video, we're gonna be going into the specifics of general connective tissue and all of its many nuances, but for now, we're gonna keep it simple and generalize things and just say it's kinda like the soft, fatty, and protein-dense tissue that wraps and connects all the different structures in the body. Now, the thing I want you to understand about this is that it is everywhere. So, what I have in front of you is going to be a chest plate. So you can see the umbilicus, but you see all this white stuff on top of the ab muscles? That is all general connective tissue. Those are collagen proteins, and collagen is extremely tough. I believe it is rated up to about 17,000 pounds per square inch in its tensile strength which means it is really good at resisting getting pulled apart. So if you have a tough tissue like this, you're gonna wanna put it pretty much everywhere. In fact, collagen is inside of bones. It wraps around the outside of bones. Collagen wraps the outside of nerves, of muscle cells, of blood vessels. Collagen is absolutely everywhere. Here, and I can even show you this really cool view. And you can see just all that, kinda looks like spider webs or cobwebs, those are all just collagen spindles between the oblique muscles. So you may have even heard the term fascia, and that is a type of general connective tissue. So in my eyes, general connective tissue, while at first glance may be the least intuitive, once you know what it is, it's probably the most intuitive because it is what literally connects everything in your body. And lastly, we have blood. Now, as I mentioned earlier, anatomists are currently discussing reclassifying this, saying that it's no longer a connective tissue, but as of this moment, most textbooks are still saying that it's a connective tissue, so we're just going to go ahead and keep it that way. But this probably makes sense to you. Blood is literally everywhere. I mean, this is the life force for cells. Blood is what carries oxygen and nutrients and also removes the waste that the cells produce, so it makes sense that you'd have blood pretty much everywhere in the body. There are very few structures that are called avascular, meaning they don't have a blood supply. 
So again, this one probably makes a lot of sense to you. Okay, so now that we know all the different types of connective tissues, I want you to know that I'm a big fan of what are called mnemonic devices. These are memory tricks that help you kind of consolidate and put a lot of information into an easy to digest package. So the one that I've been teaching my students for years is the CBGBs. It's kind of like saying the heebie-jeebies. And so CBGBs stands for cartilage, bone, general connective tissue, and blood. You can actually switch around the Bs if you want to put blood first and then bone, it really doesn't matter. It's whatever makes you happy because this is just a tool for you to be able to remember all the different types of connective tissues. Again, I find mnemonic devices to be extremely useful, so I really recommend taking this one to heart. Thanks for watching everybody, but before you go, do you want to look as amazing as I do wearing an Institute of Human Anatomy shirt? If you do, we are selling merchandise and you'll find a link to that down below, so be sure to check out our store and then you can show everybody just how much anatomical knowledge you have or just how cool you are. But thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.